What's your prayer for 2024? I would say that what we're looking at today is a man, Donald Trump actually, um, who is against the odds. He's against the odds. And the only reason that I can say today that I can still support him is because he's not a politician. He can't be bought out because he already has money. And it seems like the whole world is against him. So for me, I think if America's gonna have any chance at all, we better vote for Donald Trump. If anybody else gets in office, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. And so my prayer is that, first of all, the church would wake up, the preachers would wake up, and then the citizens of America can hear the voice of what's coming from those who really know God and know what we need in this nation. So that's my prayer for America today. Those are some powerful words. And it really makes you question what's happening around us. I mean, think about it. Just what has Joe Biden and Kamala Harris done for the American people? It's a fair question to ask, given that one of them is running for president. Guys, I never saw this on my 2024 bingo card, but the Swifties are waking up. This essentially means that whatever's happening right now will likely continue to happen for at least four more years. And it's an important question to ask because you gotta compare it to what Donald Trump has done within his last term as president. Making you ask yourself, which experience was better for you and for your family? In a recent campaign ad, Donald Trump reminds you that Joe and Kamala have really done for us. We did it, we did it, Joe. Everyday prices are too high. It feels so hard to just be able to get ahead. And prices are still too high. We did it, we did it, Joe. For many families, there's not much left at the end of the month. Costs are still too high. A loaf of bread costs 50% more today than it did before the pandemic. Ground beef, is up almost 50%. We did it, we did it, Joe. There's a serious housing shortage. In many places, it's too difficult to build and it's driving prices up. We did it, we did it, Joe. That as the price of housing has gone up, the size of down payments have gone up as well. The bills add up. We did it, we did it, Joe. That's right, guys, this is their legacy. And kudos to Donald Trump's team for capitalizing on this, because to say that there's a lot of things wrong going on today is the same as blaming the current administration. Now, oddly enough, Vice President Kamala Harris is an integral part of the current leadership right here in our country. It's not like Joe Biden went rogue and then destroyed the nation by himself. And this is the dilemma for the Harris campaign. She's trying to win with a record that speaks for itself in a really bad way for all the wrong reasons. In fact, the polls show that Donald Trump has an 83% chance of becoming the favorite to win this year. And this is said to happen just 24 hours after their first and probably only debate. We also have to admit that Kamala Harris isn't a very good speaker. Like she's horribly bad. She almost borders on cringe whenever she does try and talk to us. I mean, just look at how she talks about buses. I love my bus. <laughs> You remember when Harris voiced her love for yellow school buses while touting the administration's electric bus program? Roll it again, you gotta see it. So here's the thing, who doesn't love a yellow school bus, right? Can you raise your hand if you love a yellow school bus, right? I'm excited about electric school buses. I love electric school buses. I just love them for so many reasons. Maybe because I went to school on a school bus. Hey, raise your hand if you went to school on a school bus, <laughs> right? That, folks, is the current vice president of the United States of America. And she's going crazy over buses. And guess what? She's trying to become our next president. This is despite her going against her own words time and time again. She's just a flip-flopper. She's a chunkleta. Also, by the way, guys, join us in our network. You'll see a link down below in the description down below. We release videos over there sooner than we do here. Also, I'm dropping content that I will never ever post here. Do not miss out. There is a lot of underground content that I cannot release anywhere else. Check it out, totally free to join. Link in the description down below. Join our Patreon. Now I have here another Trump ad and that absolutely proves just how disconnected she is from reality. Everyday prices are too high. Food, rent, 
gas, back to school clothes. That is called Bidenomics. A loaf of bread costs 50% more today. Ground beef is up almost 50%. There's not much left at the end of the month. Bidenomics is working. The price of housing has gone up. It feels so hard to just be able to get ahead. And we are very proud of Bidenomics. Again, another genius ad. And it shows the American people that whatever you're experiencing today, whether you're buying food, you're paying for rent, gassing up your car, or whatever it is that involves money, all of it can be attributed to Bidenomics. Bidenomics has literally changed all of our lives. And the person standing right next to President Joe Biden throughout all of this is none other than Kamala Harris. But if you ask them, the blame should be pinned on the former administration. All of the problems that you face with your finances should be blamed on Donald Trump. Now, I understand that both Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, they have their own challenges when it comes to public speaking. But to say Trump is the problem here, I don't know. It's a little bit far-fetched. And speaking of that, the defense for Kamala Harris before the debate even happens is already being spread. We've seen her go on these weird tangents whenever she speaks, so it's going to be real interesting to see what she actually says against Donald Trump. But if you ask this particular expert, Harris is actually a genius somehow. The problem is the crowd that misinterprets her. So basically, she's really, really smart, and we're all really, really dumb, according to this professor. So here's a Columbia professor talking about Harris's horrendous interview with CNN's Dana Bash. I have to listen to her in the right way. She actually has learned a really effective way of speaking smoothly. She does these triplets, and she'll, she'll say the ambitions, the hopes, and the aspirations of the American people. Those three things are really all the same. The reason she did it is not because she's stuttering, it's because that is her way of not saying um. She's avoiding saying um or hesitating. She wanted to say aspirations, and then she'll give the synonyms as she waits. That's a form of being articulate, or if you watched her last night, then you could see that what she was really doing was she wanted to do two things. She wanted to talk about economic policy. She had a list in her head, and she wanted to keep saying, you got the feeling she had been told and she agreed, that we can't look backwards. Anything else that Bash said to her, her thought was, how can I bring it back to that? And that meant that you couldn't listen to her like she was trying to write an article or something like that. What you say isn't always what you mean. She speaks ritualistically like a politician. If somebody asks you, do you have the time? Your answer is not, I do. If you, uh, do you have the time? Right. Yes, it's four o'clock. Well, you have to understand that words don't always mean what they mean. Now, I'm telling you guys right now, they're going to be going back to this after Donald Trump sweeps the floor with her in the debate. And it's Trump's fault for not understanding what Harris wants to say. And what does it mean that we have to listen to her in the right way? He's blaming us for not understanding her. Are all of us really this gullible? It's like they want us to be as dumb as they believe us to be. But what do you guys think about this? Any predictions as to what happens when Trump and Harris actually finally face off? Now, speaking of which, DA Fannie Willis is hoping that Americans are not quite as smart as they truly are. But of course, they would just paint this all as some one-off situation, arguing that support for Trump among Swift fans doesn't exist. But that isn't the case, though, because the shirt that's seen in the AIG generated images was taken from one that was actually made by a fan. So her name is Jenna and her last name starts with a P and I can't pronounce it, but she's a Trump supporter. So the idea from fans like her is that the world was a much safer place with Donald Trump as the president of our country, which would mean safer access to concerts. And it would have also led to Swift not ending her European tour way too short. However, President Joe Biden doesn't agree with this idea. He legitimately seemed pissed off about the notion that the world was safer under former President Donald Trump, at least compared to his term. Many of you are very successful people who travel the world. Name me a country in the world that doesn't think we're the leading nation in the world. Without America, not a joke, think about it. I'm being literal. Who could lead the world other than the United States of America? But guess what? America's winning and the world's better off for it. America's more prosperous and Americans are safer today than we're under Donald Trump. Trump continues to lie about crime in America, like everything else. Guess what? On his watch, the murder rate went up 30 percent, the biggest increase in history. Meanwhile, we made the largest investment, common and I, in public safety ever. Now, the murder rate is falling faster than any time in history. Violent crime has dropped to the lowest level of more than 50 years. 
and crime will keep coming down. This concept, though, isn't as common to many Americans. Many people truly believe that the Biden-Harris administration took us back a couple of years, and the fear within some communities just can't be ignored. It's this concern that led to the entire movement that some Swifties now support Donald Trump. Hey, my name is Jenna, um, and this picture of me in this Swifties for Trump shirt has been going viral on X and started kind of a movement in the Republican Party. I actually met Trump in this shirt in Racine on June 18th, and he said, quote, she is great. I think this movement is super awesome, but also super important because it's no secret that millions of young female voters consider themselves Swifties, and we don't want them to have to choose between loving Taylor Swift and su supporting their conservative ideologies at the ballot box in November. So I say we stop the hate towards Taylor and her fan base, and let's let Swifties be for Trump fearlessly. Well, there you have it, folks. Mainstream media is going to paint this as a hoax, but you heard what this young lady said. You could be a fan of Taylor Swift and support Donald Trump at the same time. It would be unfair for these people if they couldn't vote for who they wanted to vote for because their idol told them not to. That shouldn't be the case here. Although we have yet to hear any response from Taylor Swift regarding this issue. In fact, she hasn't even talked about politics in a while. I think she's staying in her lane. And that's cool too. Many do expect her to get behind Kamala Harris, but it's kind of hard to tell at this point because she supported Biden back in 2020. She didn't say a word when Biden put in his name for the 2024 presidential election, and she didn't comment at all when he got ousted from the race. So I don't know. The odds of her supporting Donald Trump is probably close to zero, but nothing's impossible, right? Especially when you compare how bad things can get under a possible Kamala Harris term. Kamala went full communist. You heard that. She went full communist. She wants to destroy our country. After causing catastrophic inflation, Comrade Kamala announced that she wants to institute socialist price controls. You saw that. Never worked before. Never, ever worked. This is the Maduro plan, Venezuela. Maduro plan of like the old Soviet Union. This is, they tried it. How did the Soviet Union work out? It became Russia, a smaller version. It was a smaller version. It will cause rationing, hunger, and skyrocketing prices, just like their Inflation Reduction Act caused. One of the great scams of all time. They got it approved with a beautiful name, Inflation Reduction, because inflation under their system has been so bad well guys it looks like kamala harris donald trump they're going to be meeting in philadelphia today tonight in a couple of hours for the presidential debate i mean a lot of people are waiting for this what do you guys think is going to happen tonight do you think kamala harris is going to destroy donald trump like mainstream media is trying to convince us is going to happen or do you think donald trump is actually going to wipe the floor with kamala harris and what do you think about kamala harris's last minute rule change demands. Now guys, I did a previous video where she's seen showing up to her daughter's recent traffic arrest with a very familiar face. A friend of hers who was taken out of the election interference case because of their previous secret relationship. Now something tells me that this relationship was never over and it could mean that Fannie Willis can be removed from Donald Trump's case as soon as it resumes. Make sure you guys watch that video next and as always, appreciate you guys being here. I'll talk to you guys on the next one.